Hello. Hi. Fellas, you might be unaware, but I'm a little bit of a Fortnite nerd. I know, I know, I know. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of wild. But I wanted to try something. So I went down on Twitch and I watched Minecraft. Minecraft speedrunning to be specific. And I was like, huh, that looks fun. Granted, I haven't really done this before. I mean, I've tried when Minecraft speedrunning was crazy back in like 2020. Yeah, dude, I tried. But I never got that far. This can't be that hard, can it? So I thought, today, or this next month, I could get as good as I can. I hope you enjoy the video. Subscribe if you love me. I don't know how many of you love me, but subscribe if you do. And if you don't, then you should probably still subscribe because the content is pretty good and I put a lot of time and effort into this. And if you don't, then I'm gonna freaking cry. Anyway, sorry, enjoy the video. Bye. Okay, at this point, here's what I know. You spawn in, mine a tree, make a crafting table and tools, find a village, kill the golem, and get to the nether somehow. Then you could either do pig bartering, or killing endermen to get ender pearls, find a fortress, kill as many blazes as you can, make eyes of ender, find the end portal, kill the dragon, win the game, yeah. Easy enough, right? Wrong. Very wrong. The first couple games went as expected. I spawned in, couldn't find anything, so I just left and retried. And it went that way for probably the next 15 minutes. I just couldn't find a good seed. I'm gonna jump off of a high point and not alive myself. You guys ready? Are you kidding? Obviously, I wasn't very good at Minecraft speedrunning, but I persevered. I persevered for probably the next 30 minutes trying to find a good seed until finally I did find a good one. I no wait, village. Let's go, baby. And a ruined port. Oh my god, dude, right next to it as well. I was confident. I was beating the game today and nothing could stand in my way. Anyway, I did die a couple more times in the nether, but I was getting noticeably better. I even learned how to make a nether portal out of a lava pool. That's a lava pool. How do you do it again? How do you do it? Uh, I don't know. I forgot. I forgot. We'll wing it. We'll wing it. Okay. It goes like boom, boom, and then, and then it goes like. All right. You know what? I'm looking up a tutorial. How to make a nether portal with lava and water. I'm nervous, bro. I don't want to mess it up. It's like the closest I've gotten in like 12 years. I did get it right. Yo, let's go, baby. Dude, I'm so cool. Let's go, baby. I'm so hyped right now, if you cannot tell. <gasps> I almost just jumped in the lava because I'm cute. And then pretty much every time after that, it stayed relatively the same. I would spawn in a world, run around for like five, 10 minutes, see if I can find a village. And if I didn't, I would just leave. But then... I found this seed. Oh my god! Dude, look at this! Is this it? Fellas, do you see this? Spun right next to a village. I got one of the best seeds I've seen this whole playthrough, and I did not want it to go to waste. I gathered food, killed the golem, found a lava pool, and went to the nether, making it in at a whopping 12 minutes, which was pretty good for, you know, me. But I have had pretty much no prior experience to speedrunning, and it would have been a good run if I didn't spend another 40 minutes looking for a fortress just to die what? I'm not mad. I'm not mad. And I want to say I did more that week, but I really didn't. I did one more run and I got to the nether and I still died. No! But hey, what are you going to do? Next week is going to be better. I am sure of it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my lord. Fellas, I learned so much. I learned so much that I probably won't be able to fit all of it in this video. I know how to easily find bastions. I know how to easily find a nether fortress. I know how to navigate through all of them. As I said, I probably won't be able to explain it the best in this video. So I will link all of the videos that I've used in the description. They are made by this fantastic guy. His name is RecRap. And if you want to learn speedrunning, I recommend him completely. So those links will be down there. So I'll try to sum it up. Sum up everything I've learned so far. So as far as I'm aware, the best version of speedrunning, at least for the strats that I'm going to be using in this video, is 1.16.1. First, I'm going to quickly show you guys how to find a bastion. Have your F3 menu open and press pause the moment you get into the nether. The number we're going to be paying attention to is these numbers right here next to this E. 
This E stands for entities, such as mobs. The number in front of the slash on the E is the mobs in our loaded chunk, so everywhere around us. But the mobs on the left side of the slash are the mobs we are currently looking at. Remember, keep in mind that Bastion mobs always spawn first. And since there are so many mobs around, there's probably a Bastion around. So what we will do, turn our FOV all the way down, and we're just gonna look around and see when it spikes up. Oh, 30, 50 over here. There's probably one in this direction. Definitely one in this direction. Definitely one in that direction. Let's go into spectator and see if the bastion is over here. And look at that. Here it is. That's how we will find bastions in the nether. So if you ever see me doing that, that's why. Now you might be wondering, why do we need a bastion? Well, bastions give you obsidian to make a portal to get out of the nether and ender pearls which we obviously need to get into the end so there are four different types of bastions actually and i'll show you just like we saw earlier this is bridge then we also have stables treasure and for the last one we have housing stables and housing do look similar but there will always be soul sand at the bottom i won't go into crazy depth about it because you know it's kind of a lot of information to keep track of and i want you guys to stay also what are you talking about i'm not recording this a week and a half later with a new skin and already recovered from my cold that'd be crazy yeah basically what i did is i just went through and i studied the routes looked up a lot of youtube videos seriously it was a lot of information now before i continue to show you how to find another fortress i got to explain a couple things so i'm gonna hand it off to my assistant mr boy Thank you, Mr. Boy. Welcome to the Knowledge Corner. This is the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. Wait. This is the part of the show where I give you knowledge. Yep, that works. So, Minecraft works in a silly way with its chunks. Chunks are the little square areas that render around you. This is you, right there. In the middle, that's you. Everywhere around you is the chunks that are loading. Now, it's really interesting the way they render. They don't just render where you're looking. They render all around you. Yes. So whenever I mention a chunk loaded area, this is what I mean. So there could be mobs in all of these areas right here. Those are all the mobs in my chunk loaded area. Loaded chunk area. Whatever, I digress. Not only can it detect mobs, but it can detect mob entities such as chests, mob spawners, can't think of any more off the top of my head. The things that do more than just be a block. In this next segment, I'm gonna show you guys how exactly I use this knowledge to my advantage. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Boy. Thank you, you handsome devil. All right, anyway, let me show you guys how to find a fortress. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking for the blaze mob spawner that only spawns within a fortress. And how we find it is pretty cool, honestly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our render distance all the way down to like five. And then we're gonna press shift F3 to bring up this little pie chart on the bottom right. What I'm gonna show you is how to use this pie chart to detect the blaze spawner. See these numbers on the bottom? There are numbers associated with each thing that it's detecting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the numbers associated with tick, level, entities, and block entities. And after doing this, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slowly turn up our render distance. Oh, right there. So now we know that this spawner is 12 chunks away. How exactly are we going to pinpoint it though? Because it could be 12 chunks in any direction. Remember what we just talked about? You do? Lovely. You have wonderful memory. We're going to be using these. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it back down like five and then reset it to where we can't see the blue sliver. And since it showed up at 12 chunks, we're going to turn it up just below that to 11. Now how we pinpoint it is we go into each individual chunk. This way, nothing. It doesn't show up. This way? Nope. This way? Nope. But this way, there it is. It shows up. If we go this way, look at that. And lo and behold, the blaze spawner. I hope I explained it well. It was a little difficult because it's really complicated. But now, hopefully, you can start speedrunning yourself using these tactics. Anyways, I'll get back to the week. Bye. Now, even after all of that, it still sucked going through the nether. When you go through the portal, the first step is locating a bastion. And then you have to go find that bastion while also probably being chased by piglins and hoglins. And then when you find what you're looking for, having to go through the process of going through your route, collecting all the gold you need, then getting all the items you need to leave the nether and take on the end. Then after all that, you realize you didn't even get what you needed and look at the time, it's already been 45 minutes and it's bedtime. 
Yeah, the nether sucks. So that's what I spent week two doing, is just practicing the nether. Every stream, that's what I would get stuck on, is the nether. I would get to the bastion, or I would get to the fortress. And I would die. You know, that's just how it goes. You know, it's not my fault. Not like I'm bad or anything. Liar! Ah, anyway, I digress. Anyway, after a while, I got pretty consistent. I used this wonderful practice map to get used to the routes and everything. And I was able to consistently get out of Bastions and get to the fortress. And bro, I even made it to the end where I swiftly died right after. But way I made it. So after practicing it for like a week, I got relatively consistent. And yeah, I still died my fair share. But despite that, I knew deep in my heart I was ready for. I'm combining both week three and week four because I didn't really do anything new. I found a map where I could practice killing the dragon, but that was about it. The most this week consisted of was just me practicing. I would just hop on stream whenever I had the ability to and just do runs until I didn't feel like doing them anymore. I did get to the end two more times after that, but I ended up dying because I didn't have enough resources or food. It was at this point I really started getting demotivated. I didn't want to play Minecraft anymore. I didn't want to speed run. I didn't really even want to stream. I felt like it was redundant, you know? I wanted to do this a little bit ago, but I don't want to do it anymore. I even made two more videos because I just lost interest and I was preparing to scrap the video entirely. So I gave up. I said, screw it. I didn't want to play this game anymore. And if I didn't enjoy it, and if I didn't like it, then making a video about it wouldn't be genuine. So I ended up taking a little bit of a break. I stopped watching Minecraft. I stopped playing it. Kind of dropped off the face of the planet for no reason. Then I was talking to my mom one day at work and I told her how upset I was that I wasn't able to finish this. I felt disappointed. Even though it's just a silly block game, it's really a goal that I wanted to set for myself to see how much I could improve. So my mom talked to me and she told me just to do it, that I'll regret it if I don't. Said I had already put so much effort into this video, into the stream, into all the editing, that if I didn't finish it, I'd be doing an injustice to myself. So I did. I planned a day, the day before I was going out of town. I said, today, I'll play this game until I beat it. So I did. The final fateful day came. I sat down in my chair, preparing to play for as many hours as I thought I needed to. I booted up my computer, launched Minecraft, and started my stream. Feeling a little nervous and frankly a little bit hungry, I made my first world. I spawned in, I found a nearby village, made an iron pickaxe, and got to the nether. Eight minutes. I used that strat from earlier and found a bastion. Twelve minutes. Then I remember I spotted the nether fortress earlier while I was looking for the bastion. So after leaving the bastion at 21 minutes, I went to the nether fortress and proceeded to kill too many blazes until I had seven blaze rods. Which you only need six, but I wanted the extra one just in case. I left the nether to look for the stronghold at exactly 27 minutes. And then after getting my daily steps in, I found the stronghold at almost 36 minutes. And after wandering around for a little bit longer, I found the portal. And just between you and me here, my shivers were timbered. I had only gotten this close a small number of times, and each time I died. So you know my boots have successfully been quoked. Either way, I set my fear aside, sword in hand, butt in clench. I went through the portal. I look up at this dragon made up of mostly ones and zeros that I've probably seen more than my family in the past month. I take a deep breath, grab my military grade beds, and go for it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I appreciate you all for being so patient with me while I was making this. Have a good rest of your day. I love you all. See you next time. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> Fellers! First run of the day! Woo! I did it! Oh my god! <laughs>